Since its founding in December of 2019, what has the Space Force been doing and what does it plan on doing this year? Let's find out what they're up to these days. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Before we get into the details of what the Space Force is planned for this year and in the near future, let's briefly cover what the Space Force has done since the end of 2019. One of the first things the Space Force did was develop its first offensive weapon system, called the Counter Communication Systems Block 10.2. It's essentially a satellite jammer. This CCS system is designed to prevent nearby adversaries from accessing their own military satellite communications, cutting them off from their home countries. In addition, since 2019, the Space Force has officially set up three field commands. The Space Operations Command, the Space Systems Command, and the Space Training and Readiness Command. One field was set up in 2020, and the other two were set up last year in 2021. With its offensive weapon and three field commands set up and ready to use, the Space Force is ready to become even more lethal. The Air Force magazine has described the goals of the Space Force as The leaders of the Space Force foresee the service continuing to become more lethal in 2022, inventing new tactical scenarios in its third year while maturing its organizational charts and carving out roles for outside entities. We also stood up the last two of our three field commands, uh, Space Training and Readiness Command, and also Space Systems Command. These commands are built for developing combat-ready space forces and acquiring and sustaining lethal and resilient space capabilities. That's pretty big news. But what does it mean to become more lethal in outer space? Retired four-star general Kevin Chilton, who was a former commander at the U.S. Strategic Command, has noticed a change in language when it comes to military operations in space. But what's new uh, now is the notion of uh, fighting in space, you know, because uh, I can remember when space superiority, superiority defensive and offensive operations in space, war fighting in space, you couldn't even use these words. Uh, it was against policy to talk about these things, and it wasn't that long ago. And so, and consequently, we weren't allowed to organize, train, or equip our Space Forces to conduct these types of missions. This year, the Space Force plans to double the size of its Pentagon headquarters staff in 2022, adding 300 more people. Also, more troops will be transferred to the new Armed Forces branch. 670 Marines, sailors, and soldiers will transition into becoming Guardians. An additional 521 enlisted Guardians will be added with 70 officers. Then, 259 civilians will be transferring under the Space Force Command. The Space Development Agency will move from the Office of the Secretary of Defense to the Space Force this year. With it, they will bring their multi-layered, multifunctional constellation of relatively low-cost satellites. The Space Development Agency, or SDA, was created in March of 2019 with the original intention of building a notional space architecture. But since 2019, the SDA has really just focused on developing certain space-based technologies with the aim of weaponizing outer space for the Space Force and the U.S. Space Command. As they say, the Space Development Agency seeks ideas, methodologies, approaches, technologies, and systems related to the development of an agile, responsive, next-generation space architecture. Now comes the connection to universities. The Pentagon University connection has been around for generations. The Global Network made a video about the nuclear weapon production connection between the Pentagon and universities across the country in a video titled Schools of Mass Destruction, where we highlight a study that showed 
49 universities in the US are directly involved with the production of nuclear weapons. Now, Space Force wants to build an even stronger connection to universities. The Space Force has partnered with 11 big tech universities, selected in part for having Air Force ROTC detachments, but also for each campus having aerospace research programs. Some universities include the University of Colorado Boulder and Georgia Tech. The big tech industry, rather than build new technologies to create a sustainable world that benefits the majority of the people on this planet, is now working with the Space Force to militarize outer space to the benefit of US-based multinational corporations and the Pentagon. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. The Space Force is also partnered with other countries. Last year in 2021, a space summit was organized, which included 12 partner nations. This year in 2022, that number will grow to 22 nations. The space Pentagon sector is attempting to win over as many allies as possible in building a space architecture that keeps the US as the dominant imperialist power. And last year in 2021, the Space Force created yet another organization under its wing, the Space Warfighting Analysis Center. This new force design organization is focused on analysis and warfighting. In another milestone, we stood up the Space Warfighting Analysis Center, or SWAC, as you may hear us uh, calling it. SWAC looks across all aspects of the DoD space enterprise, and uh, they are informed by comprehensive intelligence and analysis. They're charged to come up with cost-effective force design solutions that meet DoD and national security space requirements. So the Space Force is leading the way with DOD partners to deliver game-changing capabilities also in a cost-effective manner. The Space Warfighting Analysis Center held its first business fair in 2021 with representatives from the space and defense industries with a goal of building closer ties between private sectors and the Space Force. And it will happen again in 2022. And lastly, the Space Force has tested and developed a groundbreaking event, what they call a rapid reconstitution capability. This capability includes the reusability of a launch, accelerating the entire process of launching from months to weeks. And it includes the possible development of a new force design for missile warning and missile tracking. We've completed 47 successful launches in 2021, and uh, in one groundbreaking event, Space Systems Command launched our very first tactical responsive launch mission last June, which compressed the normal multi-month preparation timeline to just under three weeks and demonstrated a possible rapid reconstitution capability for the nation. So the Space Force capitalized on advances in reusability as well. And we capitalized on America's vibrant commercial launch community. We launched the first national security space system on a previously flown rocket booster for part of our GPS constellation of satellites. This added up to about 30 million in savings over the course of uh, the whole process. So the Space Force clearly delivers and we're putting space capabilities in the hands of our warfighters faster and more cost effectively than ever before. So clearly, the Space Force has been working nonstop to develop its newest branch of the armed forces. They camouflage their language in order to provide their own justification for this massive spending. But in essence, it's just another way to divert precious resources, skills, and attention away from the pressing issues at hand. Rather than build a military for the people, they continue to build a military for corporations. This might be a good time to remind folks of a quote from President Rutherford B. Hayes, who wrote in his personal diary in 1888, The real difficulty with the vast wealth and power in the hands of the few and the unscrupulous who represent or control capital. 
Hundreds of laws of Congress and the state legislatures are in the interests of these men and against the interests of working men. These need to be exposed and repealed. All laws on corporations, on taxation, on trusts, wills, dissent, and the like need examination and extensive change. This is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people no longer. It is a government of corporations, by corporations, and for corporations. This is the Global Network. Thanks for watching.